Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage, and we're holding our monthly tech meet today, and we will be addressing air conditioning issues, charging, uh, evacuating, recharging, and pressures, and all that kind of stuff on a Silver Shadow 2. Yeah, you see now is this, that you're pulling it out, so saving it in the bottle, this is reusable? Uh, yes, it is. What it does is it filters it. Let me open this up so you can see the workings in here. First of all, but you can see over here, there's two reserve tanks right here. Okay, one is 12 and one is 134. And then in here, you've got two separate systems. You've got one vacuum pump, you need a vacuum pump to pull it out. And then you've got two other pumps right here. That are, the vacuum pump is to, to suck the air out of the system. These are pumping the Freon. It's got filters filters and the cold one, one typically they'll get cold or hot. So anyway, so we're, right now we're at 0.84 pounds. What is it filtering? The Freon. So is there particles of dirt in there? Or? Yeah, well, the, the system has oil in it also to lubricate things. Uh, not only the compressor, but the expansion <coughs> valve, and it's floating around in suspension. So it takes the oil out also. This machine has oil bottles on the side, and you can see they're labeled one R12 and 134 there, and you can see it's got that green color. Uh, that green is a dye that you can inject. It's a fluorescent oil that goes in there, and then you use a black light, which I'll show you how that, or ultraviolet light, I think it is, and that, uh, then you can see it with special glasses. You have to have yellow colored glasses. You can see any leaves. That's one way. There's also a sniffer. These are old school. This is like a Geiger counter. So typically, if anything's leaking, watch this. What? It'll go crazy. So it's detecting something, right? Now these were high technology at one time, but now the fluorescent dye is the best. Uh, originally, when they were doing it in the 60s and they were looking for leaks, they had a propane torch and a hose, and you look for the flame to change color. So imagine you can't find anything under the engine compartment, especially close to the carburetor, hopefully, right? Or then you got to go in the car because the evaporator would usually go in and then you get this on a headliner. It could be a little disastrous, so they've come a long way on that. There's also a machine, which mine is broken right now, called an identifier. And the identifier is, is a separate, it's usually a laptop type thing. And you hook it up to the system and it pulls a little bit of Freon out and it tells you what the mix is. The, a perfect system has pure Freon in it. Uh, if somebody's added the wrong kind, or people will put propane in, propane works great, but if you get in an accident, it makes a big boom. That's, that's not a good thing. So, And it, it'll, uh, the identifier will tell you the percentages of what kind of Freons and whatever else is in there. Do you ever have to replace the uh, dryer, or does it ever require maintenance? It's a great question, Gene. The dryer, like I said, is a it chain it it takes moisture out of the system because moisture will get in there, and it also filters it. There's a desiccant bag, and it goes through a little screen, and and it, it filters it out. So it is a good maintenance item. Whenever, say, a compressor is changed, that's the main part of the uh, system. If it's an R12 system, it's always best to change it to 134, only because of the cost, first of all. Uh, but at that point is the best time to go ahead and replace the expansion valve, which is a small orifice, and the dryer. And then flush out the system for any residues, uh, dirt. And you, you might ask, where's dirt going to come from? Well, the compressor is a big pump. It's like an engine. This one's a six-cylinder, I think. Yeah, it's 
a six cylinder, this is a rotary pump, so you've actually got a um, shaft going through that when it spins, it has a wobbly plate on it that goes like this. And what it does is pushes three pistons on each side. So as it goes around, it pushes the pistons back and forth. Uh, so that's a mechanical item. When they run low on Freon, or if they run low on oil, they start dragging metal. They start getting hot. And that metal just goes through the system. It's pumping it. And the dryer, or I mean, yeah, the dryer, which is down here on this car, is supposed to clean up most of it. But a lot of times it ends in the expansion valve and it plugs it. Didn't they go to a different compressor on the uh, valve interior? There are, well, yeah, they went to the smaller Sandin style. Um, is that more reliable or less reliable? It's more efficient, it's lighter weight, uh, and that, that's the reason. It's, it's, you can use less Freon in the system. There's a lot of reasons they've changed. Uh, this compressor is gigantic yeah. and it's it's a pretty good compressor, but uh, things improve. The ones on the modern cars are just, they're almost like space age. Super small, super low capacity, and they have variable output. It's, it's uh, totally different. This is just the way they did it for years. It's a GM compressor, or Harrison now. You can still buy them new, they're expensive. You can buy a lot of rebuilds. The new has gotten so expensive that um, I very rarely sell those. The, the new sanding ones, or the, the smaller aluminum ones, you can buy this brand new, boom, boom, boom. You can buy cheap ones, you can buy good ones. I try to buy the good ones. Uh, all right, this just beeped. So what it's telling me is it took out 1.57 pounds. That's not a full charge, so it has lost some Freon. Okay, sorry? With the 134, which you reduce it, it's usually two and three quarters max. So it's down one and a quarter pounds, okay, which is a third basically, right? Or, no, it's even, it's about half. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm, what I want to do is I want to recharge the system so that we can try to duplicate that blowing off. Or, let's try something else. Now that I got that out. All right, so, this is an ultraviolet light. You do not want to look into it. It's not good for your eyes. I'm going to let people try these on and see what it looks like. I'm going to take a quick look and see if I can see green. It's kind of hard sometimes. Hopefully we put dye in it. Typically we do when we do air conditioning work. If not, I'm going to charge it up with dye and then we'll see if we can find some leaks. I can't really see anything, so once I see a smoking gun, I will let you guys look. So what color will it show up as? It'll be bright green, Okay. fluorescent green. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and put a vacuum on this. We'll charge it up. I'm going to add oil. We're on the 134. That's good. This is the green oil over here. Uh, and we'll get started. So there's a, there's something called a vacuum charge. On this machine, you press that and it'll automatically, it asks you to connect the hoses, press start, tells you, asks you how much to put in. We're gonna go two, seven, five, and then press start again. And then it's gonna ask you how long to evacuate it. Now evacuating, what that does is a vacuum pump and it just tries to suck air through there and when it reaches a near perfect vacuum and which is unattainable I think but it's close to 30 inches of vacuum that's that's typical system is clean and it's the longer you leave it on there the more particles it's, it's going to fall out or pull out so we'll just go ahead and press start you hear that big pumps pumping now and you can watch the gauges, they, they went down real quick, right? So when it's down to its full vacuum, it's gonna be over here near the 30 inches. See, on this side of the zero, on the low side gauge, this is inches of vacuum, and on the high side, it's pounds of pressure. And if you get up here to 400 pounds, it says retard. It means you gotta back off. 